All right. Good morning. It's um, Tuesday, and um, man, some of us were up a little too late last night, probably watching some championship football, and uh, some of us may be dragging a little bit uh, today, but um, listen, if you're not a part of the whole football championship thing, it probably doesn't make sense to you, but it's a crazy night, and um, lots of fun, and uh, the Tamster and I hung out together and uh, watched some football and uh, had a great time. Hope you guys had a great night. Uh, we've got uh, craziness still going on in the world, and there's just all of this, uh, um, looks like just hatred and evil and, uh, man, just everything stirring up around here. And so that's uh, that's where we live in right now. So uh, we are uh, loving just the break from all of that as we dive into the Word of God every morning and, uh, and just enjoy what, what's happening. We've, we've been working through the book of Colossians, and, and uh, man, it's so rich, isn't it? Just full of, of good practical truth. And uh, we've turned the page. We're at chapter 3 now, and um, we're going to, he, he shifts gears from really dealing with uh, false teachers coming against us to the world coming against us. And so <clears throat> somewhat of a timely message uh, today. So let's just uh, let's just jump into it. Let me read it to you. Uh, remember, he's taught, he's taught us that in Christ we have everything. He is completely, we are sufficient in him. I am complete. When I came to Christ, I got everything needed pertaining to life, and godliness. There's no Christian 2.0. There's no, uh, you know, uh, Christian 201. There's there's none of that. Uh, you got everything you needed, so you're complete in him. And and these were things that, that were essential that we've been looking at. You've been completely forgiven, right? Completely forgiven. When you stand before the King of Kings, when you stand before the Creator of Most High, he sees you as perfect. That's how he sees you. He's declared me holy while he's making me so. These are This is what Paul has reminded us uh, so that we are completely forgiven. Uh, we, are, we are completely new, right? All things pass away. Behold, all things become new, and we have complete victory. Then he reminded us that there are people who come against us seeking to steal um, our, our faith and make us add something to it. Christ plus rules. That's what we looked at yesterday, right? Um, Christ plus experience. Christ plus denial. It's not Christ plus anything. I have everything I need. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm to live as a free man. That's how Paul told the Colossians to live, or Peter, rather, uh, said the same thing in his book. So today, let's just read. We're turning the page, and now he's going to begin shifting gears toward uh, toward the flesh, toward um, the world and how it wants to influence us. We know how the uh, false teachers want to influence us. They want us to have to begin to start keeping rules. Uh, they want us to begin to think that that unless we have a certain experience, we're, we're not where they are. Um, and then there's some who say you have to deny yourself. You have to just live as a monk and those kind of things. And so now he says this, and let's just read it. And I'm, there's going to be a lot of of just commentary I want to give to his thought to think about. Uh, he says, since then, all right, in light of all of it we just looked at, since then you have been raised with Christ, right? I was dead in my trespasses and sins, but God, being rich in mercy, made me alive. Since I was a dead man walking, I was like a zombie uh, in darkness, a fog, so to speak, spiritually, uh, a hater of God, pursuing all that I can for my flesh. When Christ awakened to me from all of that, when he raised me uh, from the dead, that in that sense, set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also uh, uh, appear with him in glory. So that's the passage that we're looking at. Now, let's just have a conversation. Because what he's basically saying is, I, I can't let the world own me. The, the fatal flaw 
of our of the church in America, and really the church around the world, is that we we love the world. We 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 are not yet wanting just to disenfranchise ourselves from the world. We we are in love with that, and and there's danger with that. Uh, you you can't have one foot in the world and one foot uh, in Jesus. It's an all or none, right? That's what he says. Anyone wishes to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, follow me. So uh, while the church these days seems to really preach that that we should um, that we should focus on uh, uh, being as as like the world as we can in order to win the world. Paul is saying something completely different. And so I just want to remind us of this. It's a, it's a bit of a, a paradox that we are in the world, but we're not to be of the world. And, and this is exactly what he's saying here. So um, let's just kind of look at a few things, some scriptures that, that I, want to, I want to help drive home to us today. Uh, John, the aged apostle, when he was writing his letter, uh, his first letter, uh, he said this, Do not love the world. Or the things of the world. For all that is in the world, the lust of the eyes, uh, the lust of the flesh, and the boastful pride of life, uh, basically get me nowhere. I mean, I, I just can't love the world. I have to choose. I'm either going to love the world, or I'm going to love Christ. But I can't love both. You can't have you can't have two girlfriends, right? You, well, I mean, you can try, but it's going to go bad for you. Uh, you, you. You just can't. You can't be divided. You have to have loyalty one or the other. And this is what Paul is calling us to. Listen, your loyalty is to the one who awakened you, not to this world who is seeking to suppress you. My loyalty is to him and to him alone. He is the king. Uh, and and, and so, so we look at that and we realize that the world is destructive. Now, we keep telling ourselves it's not, that we can dabble with it and we can play with it. It's We're okay. That's a lot like giving your kid you know, a hand grenade or giving your kid a, a box of, of rat poison and saying, now you can play with it, but don't, don't eat it. Don't get it on your fingers. Don't do whatever. This is exactly what Paul, what John is saying rather in first John, don't, don't love the world. Everything in it is designed to bring destruction in your life. Now you say, well, how do, how do we do that? How can I, how can I not, I mean, I'm in the world. I have to see everything. What, what do I do now? Are you telling me that I got to go deny myself and move off and live like a monk? Is that what we're saying? No, not at all. I mean, I think we're going to see some scriptures that remind us of that. Jesus said it like this. No man can serve two masters for it. either hate the one and love the other, or love the one and hate the other. You and I have to decide, is the world going to hold my heart or is Jesus going to hold my heart? And that's the question. That's the question that we all have to wrestle with. And we can all pretend that we love Jesus, but our life is what will dictate really where our heart is. And now what Jesus says, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So whatever it is that consumes you has your heart. And, and so this is, this is what he says. Jesus, um, Paul in uh, Galatians says this, Jesus gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world. The reason why Christ came was to get me out of the mess that the world is. That, that's why I came, because the, the world is destructive. The world is on a crash course that will ultimately end in its total destruction, and all of the ungodly will, will perish with it. And this is, this is what he's saying here. Uh, in, in fact, Paul, when he, when he was talking to the Romans, what does he say? Do not be conformed to this world. Don't let the world squeeze you into its mold. Don't take your cues from the world. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, what's interesting about that statement is it's not like we make a choice that's a passive participle in the original language, which means that uh, it's not so much that I chose to be conformed to the world, it's that I didn't allow transformation to take place, and so the world squeezed me into its mold. And I always have to bring up the fact that if I'm if I'm rowing upstream in a downstream world, I'm, I can get where I'm going to go, but if I put my paddles in the boat, the current's just going to take me wherever it does. If I'm not pursuing Christ, the world is going gonna, is gonna to slowly carry me where it wants me to go. So, these are the things that we rub up against, and this is what Paul is speaking of here to the Colossians. Uh, Jesus in John 18 says this, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, uh, we would be waging war now. As it is, you have nothing to worry about. My kingdom's not of this world. Uh, now, 
Yet, in all of that, right? So, so if you read those passages, you kind of think, man, we're going to check out of this world and uh, just not even, not even, you know, we're going to be like the Amish, right? We're just going to create our horse and buggy world and pretend that there's nothing outside of that realm and, and live in that. Yet, he also says things like this. Jesus says, Matthew 28, right? Go ye therefore into all the world, proclaim the gospel. So there is going into the world. I mean, I'm not supposed to just kind of stand on the outskirts. I'm going to go in there for one reason. Why? To preach the good news of the gospel of Christ. Uh, John, in his letter, the first letter that we looked at earlier, uh, he says this, In this world, be like Jesus. That, first John 4, 17. In this world, we are like Jesus. So we're going to be in the world just like he was. But it's not going to affect us. It's not going to taint us. Uh, he was he he walked through this planet with no agenda other than the king's agenda, uh, uh, and the the creator of the universe, the father's agenda. No no other no other goal. He came to serve. He came to love the Lord his God with all his heart, soul, mind, and strength, and he came to love his neighbor as himself. Right. That was his whole purpose. <clears throat> this is what he was doing. Now, Paul. I mean, uh, Peter says it like this, and we looked at this not too long ago. So I just want to remind you, um, he says in 2 Peter, uh, am I right there? Let me see if I can get my notes. 2 Peter 11, dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires which wage war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans. Live such a good life in this world where you live that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits. Submit yourself to the Lord's sake, to every human authority. While we're in the world, we're going to we're gonna be a team player, right? We're going to submit ourselves to human authority, whether to the emperor, who was Nero, as the supreme authority, or to governors who were sent by them to punish those, whatever, police, what, all of those things. We're, we're going to be obedient citizens. For it is God's will that by doing good, you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish people. Live as free people, he says, but don't use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as God's slaves, not slaves to the world, God's slaves. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers, fear God, and honor the emperor. Now, that those were his words. Now, how, how do we balance that? I mean, that's kind of what we're talking about. How do we, how do, we do this? Because it can be a little squirrely, right? Because... It's easy to get all caught up. Last night, a lot of us got caught up in just worldly stuff, right? We're cheering our team on, and we're going crazy, you know, for, for football. Uh, same thing in the political realm. We're just going at each other's throats as though, as though that is the supreme thing, is who the leader of a country is, uh, as opposed to who the king of kings is. And so this is what he's saying. Um he says, dear friends, I, oh, I'm sorry, I'm in, I'm in back in 1 Peter. Oh, um, sorry. All right, let me get over here. Colossians, that's where we are. Um, dear, um, am I there? Yep, dear friends, nope. All right, hang on. Sometimes computers can be just a mess, right? All right, since then, you have been raised with Christ. What's he saying? Set your heart on things above. So how do we balance this? Well, heaven has my heart. Does it have yours? That's the question. Does heaven have your heart? Now, we know it based on how we conduct ourselves and carry ourselves in, in this world. Now, so heaven has my heart, but the world is where I, where I function. Um, and I thought about how do we make sense of that? I, I, I guess I can think of a couple of different ways where we should maybe give you some illustration that will help you understand that. Um, you know, when when I'm traveling, when I'm, you know, in a foreign country or whatever, and I'm doing, uh, whether it's mission work or, or, you know, I'm meeting with other people and we're out and about and I'm not with Tammy, um, I'm going to be busy doing the, the business that God's called me to uh, while I'm there. Whether it's teaching, uh, you know, at a seminary in India, or whether it's, uh, you know, helping establish a medical clinic in Haiti, or whatever it is that we kind of get involved in doing. But in the in the evening, I I, I really want to connect with Tammy. I want to call her. I want to talk to her. I want to. But why? Because well, she has my heart, right? I mean, I just want I want to check out of whatever's going on here, and I just want to. My heart is with her, so I just want to check on, see what's going on, 
that kind of thing. Same thing in the, in the business world of the day to day. While I'm out and about working and everything, there's certain times I just call a uh, check owner. Why? Well, because well, she has my heart. I just want to make sure, hey, you okay? You know, what's going on? Uh, you having fun, right? You know, don't we all do that thing? That That's exactly what he's saying here. We're going to be in the world. We're going to, because we have, we have work to do here for the kingdom, but that doesn't mean that our heart isn't with the king of kings. And so we take lots of breaks, don't we? And we pray and we, we, hey, Father, can you do something about this? And we rock along and we see something else. And so we cry out to the Father. This is what he's calling us to do. It's like, we, we are in this world much like if last night during that football championship, you didn't really care who went, won. You just were watching the deal. You're what's called an innocent bystander, right? Uh, I mean, you know, whoever won, you know, you just want to see a good game. You know, you may have had your, had your choice, but, you know, just assume it's just your first time to watch this thing. Then you're going, well, I don't really know who's, who's, who I care about, but it's an interesting deal. That, that's how we come to the world. It's like, okay, well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm disinterested here. You know, I'm going to look at the world. I'm going to be amused with the world, but, but that's not really my sport. My, my sport is to be about the father's business. Does that make sense? This is, this is how we do it. We, we become uh, what in the business world is called a disinterested third party. I think it's more in the, in the realm of insurance, but it's when someone is arbitrating between two people and they have no vested interest in it. They're just a disinterested third party. That's how we operate with the world. We're a disinterested third party. Who comes and goes in the presidency? Who wins championships? We can get excited about those things, but we're really kind of disinterested because uh, our, our kingdom is, is in heaven. See, we don't, this isn't taught a lot, is it? But this is purely scripture. Now, so before I leave you, let's go back to this passage and read it and see if we can't help that make sense. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your heart on things above. All right? So since since Christ is the one who made me alive, that's who I'm going to go with. Right? That's who I'm going to love. I, you, you've always appreciated those person who, who came to your rescue, right? Whether it was a business decision or whether it was your health or whatever it was, and they came and rescued you out. There's an endearment that you have to them. The greatest endearment ought to be the one who awakened you spiritually from your deadness that was going to bring the destruction of eternal judgment. If he made you alive, that's who has your heart, right? If it doesn't, you didn't understand what he did for you. And so this is what he says. And then he says this, keep an eternal perspective. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. This, this is a brief, this is like a vapor. I mean, we're here for a minute. I, do we have time really to get caught up in all of the mess that's going on around here? Or should we just uh, lo love the Lord, love the brethren, honor God, or, or serve the Lord, and just honor whoever is in, is in authority over our lives? That, isn't that what Peter said? And this is exactly the same thing he says. And then he says this, For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ. Right? We died to self. We don't like to, because we still want self to be in charge. Either he's Lord of all or he's not Lord of, at all. It says, so when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. There's going to come a time I'm going to see him and I'm going to be made whole. That's my whole focus. That's the whole focus that you and I should have. And if we have to keep telling ourselves this every day, let's, while we are in the world, let's don't be up. Let's be about his business. All right. Love you guys. And I will um, see you tomorrow. Lord willing.